What's good Raider Nation? Today I want to talk to you guys about why Clutch Yosemite struggled so much in Tom Cable's system in 2018. Now of course KO struggled in both the pass and the run game and his game really dropped a lot last year and a lot of people blame Tom Cable for it. Right, Most of the blame right away uh, is Tom Cable is the reason why Clutch Yosemite sucked but the facts are Tom Cable has been pretty decent especially in the run game throughout his whole entire career. So what exactly led to the Raiders not running the, the ball well last year? I want to talk about three things. Uh, the first is I personally think Clutch Yosemite just isn't good at uh, zone blocking. Uh, I want to show you guys some zone blocking plays that did work. Uh, and then I want to show you guys some plays where Clutch Yosemite uh, just flat out missed his blocks. The first is I don't think Clutch Yosemite can zone block well. Uh, and here's an example why. In this play, uh, he has to make the decision between either picking up 53 or 51. Now, he's going to go for 51, uh, but in a zone block, you have to make that read and you have to be quick about it. And as you see, he clearly misses. Now, it doesn't really matter because the play gets stopped anyways, uh, but he still missed his block in this specific play. And it was pretty bad. And I feel like I, I watched him throughout the season and in plays where he had to make uh, the, the the quick decision he often did not make it correctly Moving on to this play. Uh, you're gonna see the guy to the left of clutch assembly make the play check it out And then I want to show you guys what went wrong All right, so you guys see the guy clearly make the play and that was the guy that Colton Miller was trying to block But I want to show you guys what ends up happening again You guys totally understand this is a zone play and we all know how zone plays work, right? Uh, it's a zone to the right, so Colton Miller has to get around that defensive lineman. He has to cut him off. But part of the zone is Clutch Yosemite has to help Colton Miller. He has to double down and then get up to the next level. Once he gets to the next level, this is where the zone really comes in. This is where the zone excel. The running back will read the offensive lineman. Uh, the offensive lineman can block this linebacker either way. He blocks him uh, to the left. The running back will make that read. He blocks him to the right. The running back will make that read. The issue in this play, and I think this is what I saw over and over and over again with Clutch Yosemite, is he has to give that good double team. If you watch his left hand, all he really does is he just kind of hits the guy in the face mask, and that's not going to um, help you. And in this instance, it does not help Colton Miller. He does Colton Miller no favors. Miller is not able to get his helmet around, and I know people can blame Miller for that, but I would honestly put that play on Clutch Yosemite. Uh, because if Miller was able to make this block right, let's just remove him. Uh, you can see that there's definitely the holes and gaps that would have opened up. Uh, but I think this was one of the issues we had last year. Now, I'm not 100% blaming uh, Clutch Yosemite, right? But I would say that he was part of the issue. Uh, Jared Cook was another player that was part of the issue, why our zone blocking wasn't working. But I want to show you guys a few examples of how the zone blocking uh, did work. Now, these plays worked very well when Clutch Yosemite was hurt. And here's the first example of that play. I want you guys to watch this double team block. Now, this is how you get your hand on one guy and you're able to get to the next level. Um, it's the same thing, right, as the previous play I showed you guys with Clutchy and Colton. Uh, essentially, it's the same thing. Uh, but in this instance, it's Rodney Hudson. And the left guard, I believe that's John Flinciano. They're going to double team this guy. Flinciano is going to help Hudson. And then Flinciano is going to get up to uh, Darius Leonard, number 53. The block is very nice. Look at that block right there. At this point, Rodney Hudson has not gotten around him. But look at that shift. Look how nice of a shift that was. He's able to get to the next level. Cut Darius Leonard off. And we pick up almost 10 yards. It's really that simple. And this is why I think the zone blocking scheme is the proper way to go. Uh, here's another play. Similar situation. This time it's with Gabe Jackson and Rodney Hudson. Um, essentially, those two guys are going to pick up 57. And I believe that's 97, right? So you got those two guys. They need to hook both of those guys. Um, and of course, the right tackle is going to just block outwards. Um, and the running back's going to have a number of reads. First, he's going to try to get to the outside, um, and then he cuts it inwards, right? You read it, you read zone plays out to in, um, opposed to power plays where you just hit the hole, right? Um, so again, back to the block, you're going to see Gabe Jackson and Rodney Hudson make a very nice block. 
But look at Hudson. Um, again, he's not around 97 yet. But look at Gabe Jackson help. 57, the linebacker essentially takes the inside angle. So Gabe Jackson quickly, right? A quick thinker. Get Lutz 57 go. And he ends up taking just the defensive lineman. Hudson gets a hand on the linebacker. And that's how you zone, right? When these when these switches need to happen, they have to happen quickly. The play, player's going to be on the same page. Uh, moving on to this next play, same situation. Uh, watch Valenciano. This play I really like. Again, it's the same thing where Hudson has to get around. Uh, and you're going to see something in this play. Uh, Valenciano realizes that Hudson did not get his helmet around and look at how he notices it and then quickly helps stop the defensive lineman and then gets up to the linebacker. You know, the quickest guy that can make the play is the defensive tackle. Valenciano understands that, takes a couple of steps to his left, realizes the play, and then gets up to the next level. Now, Rodney Hudson makes his block because of Valenciano, uh, who then gets up to the next level. Right, and again, this play here is a huge gain. I think it was like a 28-yard run, uh, and I want to show you guys now where Clutchy Assembly was missing blocks in the zone scheme. Remember, in the beginning of the video, I showed you guys why I felt like Clutchy Assembly was not built for the uh, for the zone. Right, he was missing blocks. He wasn't quick enough at thinking. And I want to show you guys him just flat out missing. And a lot of it, in my opinion, from what I kind of see is it looks like he's trying to power block these plays, right? In this play, for example, he just lunges straight outwards uh, towards his defensive lineman and he just gets swam over. He should have instead taken a step to his left and just hooked the defensive lineman. Instead, he tried using his power and that defensive lineman just swam right over him. And I feel like that's the same thing I saw over and over and over again. In this play, it's something very similar. You know, a simple zone block hook is all it needed to take, but you're going to see him straight whiff. Again, number 57, all he has to do is hook him, and he goes leaning to forward. And 57 makes the play, and again, I'm not 100% blaming him, uh, but you can see that both Colton Miller and Seth Roberts are going to make their blocks, and the running back would have had an open lane. Literally, this could have went for a big gain. Um, but again, you're going to see 57 beat Kalachi Osemli and destroy this play. All Osemli had to do was just stick on his one guy. And it would have been the running back versus number 23 out in the open field. Um, you know, and these, again, are the types of things that I feel like is the reason why we ended up trading uh, Kalachi Osemli. Uh, here's another example. All Kalachi Osemli had to do was get his helmet in front of this defensive lineman. Third and one, he can cut block. There's so much he can do, and he just misses. And this defensive lineman makes the play. These are the issues I had with Clutchio Assembly. I know Clutchio Assembly went and had that interview where he bashed John Gruden, essentially calling him fake. Uh, but, you know, in this next play right here, it's the same exact block. But watch Colton Miller actually make the block, right? I'm not saying Colton Miller is better than uh, Clutchio Assembly because Clutchio Assembly is a pro bowler. He's, I think he's an all pro. Uh, but Colton Miller understands. All he has to do is jump in front of a guy and the, the block is made. You know, you literally jump in front of a guy, cut him off and just look at the hole, right? Watch this play from uh, start to finish. Uh, again, Colton Miller understands. All you have to do is jump in front of a guy, cut him off. And the, the play is essentially made from your blocking perspective. Uh, watch Clutchio Samuel again. Same situation. All he has to do is just cut the guy off. And he doesn't. Instead, he takes the wrong angle. He gets his helmet to the outside when he should get his helmet to the inside. And the guy makes the play, right? Third and one, we end up punting the ball. I truly believe the difference between good teams and bad teams is the offensive line play. If you have the best offensive line in the league, you can make the playoff just based off that. You can have an average quarterback, uh, right? The Philadelphia Eagles do that every year with Nick Foles, or at least the last two years. I think the Raiders getting rid of Clutchio Assembly was the smart move, primarily because he did not fit our scheme. Now, if we decided to keep running a power blocking scheme, then that's fine. We could have kept him. But the fact that we were running the zone scheme, it did not make sense to keep someone like Clutchio Assembly. It made more sense to get rid of him, trade him away, and get ourselves an offensive tackle. All right? We traded away Clutchio Assembly, and we spent that money on, uh, on Trent Brown, which I think was a smart thing to do. 
Now, do I think Kachion Femme is a garbage player? I do not. I think he's one of the best guards in the league. But the same thing could have been said for Josh Norman when he was in Carolina. Uh, same thing could be said about a lot of players that go from one scheme to a different scheme. The scheme is the biggest thing uh, when you have to look at players, right? That's why oftentimes uh, linebackers and corners and players like that that get paid a lot of money to go to a different team doesn't make sense because a lot of the time it's the scheme that makes the player good and not the player that makes the scheme good, right? Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, played very well for the Giants. He might not as well play as well for uh, the Browns, right? It's just it could be a scheme thing. Um, that's the same thing I think with Clutch Assembly. He's a good player, but he did not fit our scheme. Now I know people would say, well, why not fit the scheme towards the players instead of you know finding players to fit the scheme? I think for long-term success, uh, you do want to fit certain things for your players. Uh, but in this instance, this is a brand new scheme and a brand new system that's coming in. Uh, you need to set it up a certain way. You can make tiny adjustments in the future if uh, a player is better at one thing than the other. Uh, but as far as Clutchio Assembly, he, he had that interview where uh, he said that John Gruden lied to him. John Gruden told him, you're part of our future. But that was when he came in in 2018. Well, the truth is, is he was a part of our future. The issue is, is you have to prove yourself. You cannot go to work, miss a, a third of the year, you can't go to work and not perform well. You can't go to work and do a half-assed job and expect to stay at that position. And honestly, most of your employers would fire you. They wouldn't say, hey, we found you a different employer that's going to, uh, you know, that wants you. They're not going to do that for you. They're going to fire you. In this instance, the Raiders did not uh, fire or cut him. I understand their uh, salary cap uh, benefits of not cutting him, rather trading him, but they still went out and found a trading partner, essentially got nothing back for him and got him into a situation where he can excel. The Jets is a very good team. You know, they could have sent him elsewhere, like to the Bills or, or to a different organization. Um, you know, the Jets are a very good team. They're playoff bound and, and the Raiders put him in a good situation. Um, overall, I think the Raiders did the right thing of, of moving on from KO. I think what they need to do now is uh, stick with their guys, right? You have Colton Miller, who is, in my opinion, a very good zone blocking uh, offensive lineman. Um, of course, zone blocking referring to the run game. Uh, Rodney Hudson, very smart, right? Both of these guys are quick thinkers. Gabe Jackson, I showed you guys that play. He's a quick thinker. Um, let's see how this works out now. You know, we have Richie Incognito, who was a Pro Bowler the last three years he played. Uh, Trent Brown, I think he was a Pro Bowler last year, but um, a lot of potential there. I think he's like 25, 26 years old, so he's still really, really young. Uh, let's see how it works out. I want to know what you guys think about this video. I want to know what you guys think about this offensive line. I know people are going to hate on Tom Cable, uh, but just look at the statistics as far as rushing yards per, uh, per attempt. Uh, he's always been in the top. And I think he'll continue that this year. I know he, that wasn't the last year, but last year he didn't really have his guys. And implementing a new scheme system definitely takes at least a year. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, please like, share, comment, subscribe if you guys are not subscribers. And I'll see you guys next time with the Game Film Breakdown.